Happy Friday. Was that, I feel like I should redo it. Was that weird? Too much? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> the e-learners and Mrs. Long's class don't know how many times we do it if Mrs. Long is being too silly. <laughs> so we'll leave it so they can see. Um, math notebooks. I know, I just explained. I feel like they should know that sometimes we really do them because they're almost too silly. <laughs> so we had to tone it back down. How can it be too silly? I don't know. You're spilling water. Yeah, I saw Alright, we're going to start with the next mystery. Um, somebody said, well, we did seven last time when we're at nine. I just really wanted to skip to nine because I didn't cheat and look ahead at the answer, but in the description they said it's really, it's a really good one. So I'm gonna do it with you guys too, and I'm making my own guess, and I just really wanted to see if they are right, that this one's like a really good one, okay? All right, so it's, too easy. it's called uh, the cup side down. Oh, no. We're on number nine, math notebooks out, working with us. Ooh, so this time our, they have a cup and it's oh, upside down. It's gonna be like 50 All right, so before seeing the clues, right now in your math notebook, as to mystery number nine, how many of these, what are we gonna call these, marbles? They're, they're like pebbles. Like, they're like, oh, like pebbles, yeah. They're like the one you use like, uh, like fish tanks on the bottom. Um, or sometimes like your parents use as like maybe like uh, decorations in vases. Um, they're not marbles because they're not totally round. They're more like a oval type shape. So I'm gonna zoom in. For everybody to see. Make your own guess. Write it down. Write it down. All right, here we go. All right, so as our clues appear, we will adjust our estimates and make new ones if our clues don't fit our number. All right, number one, the answer is an odd number. Um, so my original estimate was 24. 24 will not work because it's even, so I'm going to change to 23. It's going to be my new one. Well, I think that's a little All right, everybody make your own estimate. And I don't know the answer either. So don't go, so don't go by mine. I haven't looked ahead. Nope. Actually, all of these. I never look ahead because I always think they're really interesting to do along with you guys and see. Aww. All right, clue number two. Shh. Look at the visible faces on the die. What do you see? Those three digits are not in the answer. And I want to hear some other possible numbers that people have up here. I'm safe. Okay, we're going to change here. Hold on. Yes, I need to change mine. 23 will not work. All right, raise your hand. And I want to write down Bradley. Uh, 53. 53. Raina? 43. 43. We've got like all over. 23, 53, 43. 35. 35. 33. What is it? 33. 33. Mm -hmm. um, just give them to me, guys, out loud. 37. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. Not, hey, when I said give them to me, you don't have to shout them, though. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't move any farther away from you that you need to shout it, okay? 23. 31. Um, 35. I got 35. I got 37. 26. 25. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. Two was that those three digits are not in the answer. So I had 23. So let me make a new one. Um, I'm gonna say. Can you lose my markers? Will you guys lose my markers? No. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say 
On the die. Okay, what do we get when we add them? I see a four, a two, and a one. So four plus two plus one is seven. The sum is not a digit in the answer. All right, so I did see over here, um, let's cross off our ones that did not work over here. Um, well, first off, uh, two, so you can't have anything with a two in it. Okay, and then it can't have a seven in it. Or four, or four, 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 what One's else? Already up there, so you okay, can't let's it. keep going then. Oh, I got 19 is my second guess, so if I'm wrong, just make note of it that I said 19 was a really good guess. All right, let's see. Oh, yes, good catch. Mason, we can't do 19 because 1 is on our die. I'm still in. My original number is 19 can't be it. 34, We can't have 1s. 32 would be an even number. Oh, I have 36. Ladies and gentlemen, I like our discussions on this, but less shouting right now. Okay. Simmer. Simmer class, simmer. All right. The answer does not include the digit six. So my estimate at 33 still works. And the estimates that we have up here also still work as well. Does anybody have a new one that they needed to change? Which the six. Uh, the six could not be at the end because that would have made it an even number. It could have started with a six, so 60 something. All right, clue number five. It says, look at the die again. The visible numbers are part of a counting sequence, except one number is missing. That missing number represents a digit that is in the answer. So what, shh, yes, three. So this, guys, we're starting to get out of control. Control yourself. Be respectful. If borderline's getting rude, then, okay. All right, so our number sequence, I see one, two, four, you guys said three. So our sequence here, that number, that digit we're missing, one, two, three, four. Three is our missing one. So it says that that missing number, which is three, is a digit that is in the answer. So I am still safe with 33 as an estimate. Um, the, there's only one up here that does not. Um, 55 does not have a three in it. That's 50, 53 has three. So we've got 53, 35, 33, and 39. So that's the threes. Let's see if any of us are correct. Uh, let's take a vote. Shh. Simmer. This vote is that you're just going to raise your hand. Mrs. Long's class and e-learners, I still want you to participate. Okay, so still be thinking, which one would you vote for? Uh, raise your hand for 53. Uh, I see one. Raise your hand for 35. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Raise your hand for 33. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Raise your hand for 39. One, three, two. All right, so 33 and 35 is definitely where the majority of the class is for my class. I hope I hope you because that was my Mrs. Long's class, you guys discuss what your estimates are. Tell somebody in your area, what's your estimate? 
All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah. Oh! Oh! Wow. <laughs> never, never would I have thought that there that are 53 <laughs> objects in that. Never. All right, so my guess, Slimmer, my guess is, so we can only see so many towards the front. My guess is, is possibly this cup is bigger than what we think it is, and so there's a lot more towards the back that we still can't see, and it's kind of deceiving the depth of it, is my guess, because it does definitely not look like 53. That, that does not look over. Wait a minute there. All right. No more shouting out, please. Mouths are closed to be a listener. Justice, did you have a question? I know, it's deceiving. All right, guys, we've done these before. We haven't done one in a while. Where we're going to be guessing, who am I? Who is this number? So each robot is a number, and they're going to give us clues, and we have to try and figure out these clues. Now, remember, um, this is more of kind of uh, like an English-British type uh, website. So instead of ones here, they use a U for units, okay? It just means ones. T is still tens. They use a U for units here, okay? It, it means once, that's all, okay, if you see that. All right, so the clue says, and I know it's smaller, so I'm gonna read them. In your math notebook, you're gonna try and figure out what is this number. It says, I am even, okay? And it says that the sum of my digits is 16. Write down, what is the number right now? It's an even number, and the sum of the digits is 16. So what is the number? What is the number that's gonna be in this robot right here? It's even and the sum is 16. Tell somebody in your area now. Eight. 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 I, feel like uh, I hear some people saying only one digit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's two digits here. It's two boxes here. An even number and the sum is 16 of these two digits. It is very possible. All right, listening in three, two, one. Justice, thank you for raising your hand. Do you have a question? What's your question? You have to tell me what is the, there's a number here. It's a two digit number, a two digit number here. What is this mystery number? They're telling us that it's even, and when you add the two digits, you get 16. Raise your hand and tell me, Ben. 88. 88, very nice. 88 is even, and when you add eight and eight, you get 16. 88 was our mystery number. All right, let's do another one. All right, we have another two digit number, two digits, our clues. All of my digits are odd. My tens digit is equal to six less than my units digit, meaning my ones digit. I am less than 20. I'll read them again. You write down what is this mystery number. All of my digits are odd. We got a two digit number, okay, two digits. All of my digits are odd. My tens digit is equal to six less than my ones digit. I am less than 20. What is our mystery number? Mason? 17. He says 17, is he correct? Maybe, because it's an odd number. Is it odd? Yeah. Uh, is it less than 20? Yes. yes. Is this 10 digit, so 17, so a 1 and a 7, yes. is the 10 digit 6 less yes. than this digit? Yes. Yes. So then you can go up here. Oh, sorry. Anytime anything in. Hold on. Can I keep going? Yes. Yeah. Oh. 
that's how you know. Yeah. All right. Shh. Shouting out will get you a tally. Are we understood? All right. Unless I ask for a question or for a comments and uh, volunteer information, okay? All right. We have a two-digit number. The sum of my digits is equal to five. My tens digit is not odd. When you take your tens minus the ones digit, you would get one. What is the mystery number? Write it down in your math notebook now. The sum of my digits is equal to five. My tens digit is not odd. And when you take the tens digit minus the ones digit, you would get one. Kara, what's the number? 23. Yeah. She says 23. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. I think it's 23. It has to be. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Yeah. You, are, you guys starting to pick up on these now? Yeah. At first, you guys, you guys were kind of puzzled, huh? They're too easy. They're too easy? No. Mason. All right, here we go. You're welcome. Puzzle number 15. Oh. Clues. So I see we have a one, two digit number. The sum of my digits is equal to 14. All of my digits are different. All of my digits are odd. My value is less than 90. 90. 90. 90. Alyssa, what do you got? 59. She says 59. 59. Man, I hit 95 until I heard that. Yeah. I had 60. Yeah. Very nice. I still hear some friends saying it's so easy. No, it is. Yes. All right. Ooh, here we go. We have three digit number here. One, two, three digit number. Clues. My ones digit is equal to my hundreds digit. My ones digit is equal to my hundreds digit. The sum of my digits is equal to 12. My tens digit is equal to zero. What is our mystery number here? Write it down in your math notebook. Got a couple friends who are not writing down an estimate here, or not an estimate, an exact number. Tell me what the exact mystery number is here. It is not an estimate. Tell somebody next to you now, what is our mystery number? is even. All of my digits are the same. The sum of my digits is equal to six. I feel like this one was way too easy. Reyna? 222. Yes, 222. All right. Next time, we will amp it up, and we will start probably in the 30s. Yes. That was in the 20s, and we did just fine with that. All right. This is good for your brain. Here we go. Hmm. You found the hidden switches. You hid the ah. tracks, and now your expedition finally stands at. I'll play it more than once. This first time, just listen. The lost city. But as you study the inscriptions in the near total darkness, two of the eight graduate students accompanying you bump into the altar. 
Suddenly, two wisps of green smoke burst forth, and the walls begin to shake. Fleeing for your lives, you come to a room you passed before with five hallways, including the one to the altar and the one leading back outside. The giant sand glass in the center is now flowing with less than an hour before it empties, and the rumbling tells you that you don't want to be around when that happens. From what you recall of your way here, it would take about 20 minutes to reach the exit at a fast pace. You know this is the last junction before the exit, but your trail markings have been erased, and no one remembers the way. If nine of you split up, there should be just enough time for each group to explore one of the four halls ahead and report back to this room, with everyone then making a run down the correct path. There's just one problem. The inscriptions told of the altar's curse, the spirits of the city's king and queen possessing intruders and leading them to their doom through deception. Remembering the green smoke, you realize two of the students have been cursed. At any time, one or both of them might lie, though they also might tell the truth. You know for sure that the curse didn't get you, but you don't know which students can't be trusted. And because the possessed students may lie only occasionally, there is no guaranteed way to test them to determine which are cursed. Can you figure out a way to ensure that you all escape? Don't worry about the possessed students attacking or otherwise harming the others. This curse only affects their communication. Okay, I'm gonna rewind it. This time while we are going through it, I want you to take some notes and try and figure out how are you going to solve this to get out of the temple safely. This is gonna hurt. Okay. Taking notes this time. Oh my God. This is gonna hurt bad. Test them. Your ex. You found the hidden switches, evaded the secret traps, and now your expedition finally stands at the heart of the ancient temple. Alright, so there is the temple there. Okay? They're in the temple now. Those are the friends standing around in the circle in the temple. Uh, you are the one in red, your friends are the ones in green. inside the lost city. But as you study the inscriptions in the near total darkness, two of the eight graduate students accompanying you bump into the altar. Okay, so remember, the sign said that the temple is cursed. And since we've already listened to it once, remember they said that two friends were cursed. Mm -hmm. So those were the two friends that bumped into it, touched it, okay? So they're cursed. We just don't know which two friends they are. I think I might be Suddenly, two wisps of green smoke burst forth, and the walls begin to sh So that green smoke was the curse going on those two friends then. Jake, fleeing for your lives, you come to a room you passed before with five hallways. Okay, so here's the room, and it has five hallways in it. It's kind of dark to see the five hallways but there is one two three four five it's kind of like a circle with five like some beams coming out of it okay taking notes including the one to the altar and the one leading back outside the giant so how many go back to the altar Including the one always, including the one to the altar and the one leading back outside. Okay, so this temple is cursed. Do they want to stay in this temple? No. No, they need to get out. This one to the altar is the one that leads outside. All of the other ones, they don't they don't really know about them. Okay? But they need to find just that one path. The giant sand glass in the center 
is now flowing with less than an hour before it empties, and the rumbling tells you that you don't want to be around when that happens. From what you recall of your way here, it would take about 20 minutes to reach the exit at a fast pace. You. Okay, another good note to add. So they're saying, first off, he said they have probably less than an hour, right? Until this hourglass is empty. And they say it takes about 20 minutes to go down each pathway, right? 20 minutes. Is that enough to check out each one by themselves? No, they're not going to have enough time if each one takes 20 minutes. So this is the last junction before the exit, but your trail markings have been erased, and no one remembers the way. If nine of you split up, there's... All right, so the nine friends split up. The nine friends split up so that they could each try taking different paths to see which path is the correct one. The one that leads to the altar, which will take them outside. Could be just enough time for each group to explore one of the four halls ahead and report back to this room, with everyone then making a run down the correct path. There's just one problem. Okay, so as they split up into their groups, they're all going to test out a path, right? Come back, discuss it. Hey, my path was the one that you know, goes outside, hurry this way. And they all can go outside together then, right? Yeah. Sounds yeah. good? Yeah. But there's always a problem. The inscriptions told of the altar's curse, the spirits of the city's king and queen possessing intruders and le- So how many friends are cursed? Two. 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 Them to their doom through deception. Remembering the green smoke, you realize two of the students have been cursed. How many friends are there all together? Nine. Nine friends all together. Eight. Two are cursed. Any time, one or both of them might lie, though they also might tell the truth. You know for sure that the curse didn't get you, but you don't know which students can't be trusted, and because the possessed students may lie only occasionally. All right, so the problem with these possessed friends is that they might lie. So they might go and test out a path and be like, oh yeah, this path, it leads to the altar, it goes outside, hurry, come with us. But if they're cursed, they might be lying, saying to go that way. So you don't know if you can trust those two friends, but you also don't even know which two friends that those are that are cursed. That just makes There is no guaranteed way to test them to determine which are cursed. Can you figure out a way to ensure that you all escape? Don't worry about the possessed students attacking or otherwise harming the others. This curse only affects their communication. Alright, I'm going to pause here. I want you guys to come up with a solution. guys come up with a solution. Solutions, Bradley. Solutions. So you have some people wait, so like in that big room, and then each then one person down each hall. 
So you only send one person down each hall? Yeah. How do you know that one person that you send to the hall is one that's not cursed, that's going to lie when they come back? So you're leaving some people behind to not. Give me some more, Raina. I don't have much of an idea, but I'm saying like you know how it shows the five ways. So there's five ways. And there's nine people. There's nine right. people. It shows that two go down each, and there's one that's leaving people. I, I have a feeling it has something to do with three. So you send two to a group, but one group will have three because it's an odd number. Uh, justice. So you're saying three people go down each hallway? Yeah, because if there's three people that are lying back together, the other one person can also just tell that they're together back there. So if you send only two so if you send only two people, they could be the two that are cursed, so you wouldn't know. But if you send a third, at least one of them isn't gonna be cursed because only two are cursed. But can you send we don't have enough to send three down each hallway all at one time. Remember, we are under a time constraint too because each path is gonna take you 20 minutes. We've only got an hour. You're on You're on a really good start. You're on a really good start. Aiden? Um, well, when I saw that, so the beginning of the hourglass, um, I thought that the hourglass was like the beginning of the hourglass and then it would be like the So you think the people with their hands in their pockets are the cursed yeah, ones? Only two. I don't know. It's all for risky to bank on the people with their hands in their pockets. They're the cursed ones. Wait, Sounds maybe risky. Maybe I'm going to add to Justice's thing. Because if you have three people, they'll come back. There's still 40 minutes left. Then you take So if you send three people down each, hole, down each hallway, you would still know. have time left over. And if somebody's lying, they don't go down those. So let's hole. think about that. So hold on. I want to kind of draw, draw a little sketch. Drawing helps me in math. So we've got five. So this is our middle. But we know one Oops. is cursed. And one has the three spread. Then you got I feel like our top one. one was more like. That was two top. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if I send three people down this one. And I send three people down this one. There's six people. One more group of three. Yeah, that's nine. That's nine. And then we have but then I've still got two paths I haven't taken. So that back. took me how long? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. So when they come back, you have forty minutes left. I've got forty minutes left, so I had sixty minutes. Now I'm down to uh, minus twenty minutes. So I'm down to forty minutes. And then you ask, you ask the whole class. Once they get back, if anyone was lying, and if no one was lying, you know that you're safe. Then you go down one tunnel, and then another. Then so you know you're not cursed. So you're saying just you. I'm gonna put you. Down, you go down one, which would take twenty, and then you take one person. So there's another down, twenty minutes. So now you're only down to twenty minutes then. Because then you add another person to go down the other other tunnel. Because if you come back and you know they're because you're gonna ask if anyone if they saw the way, and if somebody says yes in that group, then that's and the other two people said no. You guys got some. You guys got some good ideas going. And then they go back up. Then you guys go back up there. Then you were minus that twenty. Then you have twenty minutes left to get out. Mimi. So you're thinking that you know which two people are cursed? Yeah. I don't think he knows. I think, I, I mean, two people set off the curse, but I think when it sprayed the green stuff, that then he wasn't sure who got the green, like the green, that's the stuff that curses you, was that green spray. I don't think he knows with that green spray, though, who it hit, though. Max?
Let's see. The first thing to realize is that since you know you are possessed, you can explore one of the halls alone. Okay, this so we had that part going. For the remaining three paths. Sending groups of four down just two of the paths won't work, because if one group came back split two versus two, you'd have to guess who to trust. But splitting them into one pair and two trios would work every time. And here's why. The possessed students might lie, or they might not, but you know there are only two of them, while the other six will always tell the truth. When each group returns to the hall, all of its members will either give the same report or argue about whether they found the exit. If a trio returns in total agreement, then you know none of them are lying. With the pair, you can't be sure either way, but all you need is reliable evidence about three of the four paths. The fourth you can figure out using the process of elimination. Of course, none of this matters if you're lucky enough to find the exit yourself, but otherwise, putting everything together leaves you with three possibilities. If each group gives a consistent answer, either everyone is telling the truth or the two possessed students are paired together. In either case, ignore the duo. If there's only one group arguing, both others must be telling the truth. And if there are two conflicts, then the possessed students... So something that we didn't talk about that would come into play is we didn't talk about... So they did, yeah, process of elimination, kind of. Um, so they had three, three, and two. So he's saying no matter what, this group of two, you can't really trust them. Because worst case scenario, the two cursed people were paired together. So no matter what, we can't really trust this group. But these groups, he was saying process of elimination because if, one, if they have a cursed person in their group, then they're gonna be arguing probably about whether it's the correct path or not, okay? They're not gonna be able to agree because they're gonna have that cursed person. So if they're arguing, that's kind of your big clue. Oh, somebody's cursed in your group because you guys shouldn't be arguing about that. Either it's the correct path or it's not. Are in separate groups and you can safely trust the majority in both trios since at least two people in each will be truthful. The temple collapses behind you as greenish vapors escape from two of the students. You're all safe and free from the curse. After that ordeal, you tell your group they all deserve a vacation, and you just happen to have another expedition coming up. No. Well, luckily, you guys do have spring break coming up. That seemed like he was possessed. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Yesterday, what did you guys have for math homework? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing? No homework at all? No, nothing. Who's your math teacher? You! The math teacher. Today, for math. We have nothing. You guys have no homework. Yeah. I don't know why or how it worked out two days in a row you guys have no math homework. Okay? But I want you guys dedicating more time to your language this afternoon, okay? When we do it, okay? I really want us working hard on our writing. I also have friends who are behind on their writing or behind on their poetry projects, okay? You also have your reading logs that you need to work on. So with a little bit of extra time here, work on those reading logs and read some extra, okay? Uh, morning work. Don't forget you had morning work from Mr. Harrison and you still had morning work uh, science from me, okay? So you had both. So again, you got some extra math time, but you guys got some other things that you need to work on. All right, questions? Um, I have a question about like the grades. So when you like grade it, does it, um, does it do you like start at what you were at? Good question. So um, she asked how, about grades, so how grades work. Um, so it is a new nine weeks, not a new semester, but a new nine weeks. We are in our last nine 
leaks oh, and then you guys are middle schoolers okay yeah. and because you guys are so close to middle schoolers we have middle school expectations and that we want to see you guys acting like you're ready for middle school okay um so when we start a new nine weeks you guys start at zero you don't start with whatever grade you had if you had a c you're not starting with a c if you had an a you don't get to start with an a everybody starts back at zero okay all of these grades and that you're doing from here on out are on the new nine weeks okay so any late work or any missing work that you guys had is just done we start over all right Why don't why doesn't don't why don't we all start A's? Well, because you have to earn the A. You haven't done anything to earn the A yet. You have to earn your grades. All right, guys, go ahead and get started.